join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Father, to bless you and thank you once again for allowing us to come to draw closer to you, Father. We need you right now, Lord God, more than ever. So come in and fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father God. Father, bless the man of God that's coming forth to bring forth the word. Anoint him, Father, and give him the words you want us to hear tonight, Father. But Lord God, as we go out through Facebook and through the phone, I ask that those that hear this word tonight be blessed, Father. And those that hear it but may not understand, give them the wisdom to understand the word that's coming to them tonight, Father. And Father, help us to come out of these walls and help those that don't know you, we get them to you, Father. We'll lead them to salvation, Father, to do our ministry, Father, the best way we know how. As long as we're here in Bible study to learn more about you, we will continue to go forth and spread your gospel, Father. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord. Father, I'd like to lift up those that have lost loved ones, Lord God. Uh, we are standing in the gap with them, Father. I ask that you also bless those that are sick and shut in, Lord God. Not just here, but around the world, Lord God. But Father, we even lift up the Farragut and Fort Greene community, Lord God. I ask that you continue to have the young men put down the guns and the violence, Lord God, and open up the word of God so they can live a yeah. better life, Father, not yeah. take for granted what life is all about. Yeah. Oh, bless your name, Father. So, Father, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Continue to bless the members of the church at the open door, Lord God. Those that are well and those that don't feel well, Father, anoint them too and feed them, Father. Like you fed the 5,000 with, with just five loaves of bread. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. It is now time for you to get fed tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I have the distinct pleasure to bring forth your pastor and mine, the Reverend Dr. Mark V.C. Tell us! Truly, all power, all glory, all honor belong to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for another day that we're able to come before you. We thank God for another day in the land of the living. Yes. Amen. I want to thank uh, Deacon Flowers yes, for starting our devotion. I want to thank my technician, Sister Zianna Richardson, for being here and helping us to stream this on Facebook. Uh, on YouTube and on the telephone line. I heard them setting up the line and we thank God for whoever's here, however you're here, we just thank God for you. Uh, we're so happy to be, uh, this is my second Bible study back and I'm just happy to be back. I had a good rest and we're going to uh, get right into it. Uh, let's open up our Bibles and let's go to our text. It's found in 1 Timothy, the third chapter, and we still are in the second verse uh, where it says, talking about a bishop, it says, uh, no drunkard. It's, it, well, let me read too so we can get the context. Now, a bishop must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, temperate, sensible, dignified, hospitable and apt teacher it says in the revised standard version an apt or many able teacher and this is the word of the lord thanks be to god let's bow our head god we thank you for another night we thank you for opening a door of opportunity for us to work to learn and to grow we pray that you would fill us with your holy spirit shake us uh, in ways that we need to be shaken Shake off the shackles of lethargy, tiredness, distraction, and help us to focus on your word. Touch us right now, Lord. We need a touch from you. And God, I pray that you give people whatever they need, Lord. Oh, Lord, it was already started in the devotion. Let it continue in this teaching that your blessing, your hand, your deliverance, Lord, can come through your word. For you said <clears throat> your word is not bound. Oh, God, uh, we, we thank you. Uh, let that word break us free from all bondages and let that word delight us tonight. This is our prayer. Let that word heal us tonight. Let that word encourage us tonight. And we'll leave here better than when we came in. In the name, above every name, my name, Master's name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. All of God's people said, 
Amen. 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 Please be seated wherever you are. Um, we were on that word hospitality last week, hospitality. And we called to your attention. Uh, well, we, we're not on hospitality. We want the word hospitable. Yes. Let me be very clear. Hospitable. Because a bishop, a Christian leader, but we also learned that these values are values for all of us as Christians, is supposed to be hospitable. One version I was just reading said, given to hospitality. But the word hospitable means able to be hospitable. All right. We called your attention to uh, the word hospitable and the first uh, four letters, five letters, uh, hospitai, six letters. Uh, when you think of hospitai, you or well, hos hospitable. When you think of hospitai, you think of hospital promoting healing. When you think of hospitable, you hear that those first few letters, you think of hospice, preparing people for eternal rest. And I talked about a definition that I came across in my uh, cell phone dictionary, hospitable, favorable to life and growth, as in the ground was hospitable to those seeds, or the ground had hospitable soil. Uh, but also hospitable was defined as having an attitude of practice that welcomes guests and is friendly and giving to guests. Having an attitude of practice that welcomes guests and is friendly and giving to guests. That was uh, a definition of uh, uh, being hospitable generally. We looked into the Greek and we found out that the... Uh, Greek word for hospitality was uh, philozenos, philozenos, mm -hmm. uh, a lover of strangers. And that also means not just a lover of strangers, but a lover of guests. Uh, we shouldn't uh, take, take hospitality just to mean strangers, but it also means guests. And so uh, I gave a definition of Christian hospitality. Christian hospitality occurs when strangers can feel the love of God mm -hmm. through the interactions with the people of God. Yes. Christian hospitality occurs when strangers can feel the love of God through their interactions with the people of God. And I gave some uh, examples. I really talked about the guest ministers and their comments. And then I talked about my pastors that I had in my life and other people that I saw who were uh, hospitable. Uh, my uncle used to take us years ago. We had Bible study on Wednesday in Chicago. And sometime in the summer, when the Bible study would be over, uh, my uncle would take us to the park and he would buy us ice cream. And not, not store-bought ice cream, but hand-churned ice cream, real ice cream. It's a place called Baldwin's in Chicago. And my uncle used to take us, used to take us on Sunday too. And uh, it was such a joy, first of all, just to be with the man of God uh, because he was my uncle, but when he became uh, pastor of the church, my mother told us, you have to stop calling him Uncle James. Now you have to call him Reverend Jordan. And I was like, well, why? She said, because he's been uh, called to a church and you, he's been uh, called up and you have to step up change what you do. So Reverend Jordan would take us and we would eat that. Well, that ice cream was so good, you didn't even have to have a flavor. You can just eat vanilla. It was just, uh, it was wonderful. Um, gracious, um, always gracious. Uh, gave me the keys to the church when I was around 15. I was involved in youth ministry and uh, told me to uh, make sure I just locked the door but he was hospitable until uh, he passed away. Uh, and I talked about Elder Moody, who used to take, uh, the youth would go out after Sunday night church. We had Sunday night service. And sometimes we'd go to this restaurant where Bishop Moody would come in. And he would pay for everybody's food. I'm talking about 20 and 30 people. He would pay for their food. Wouldn't say anything. Hospitable. Uh, when I went to my prayer partner's church, and my prayer partner and his wife, Elder Oscar and Lita Owens, uh, went to uh, 
Bishop Charles Blake's church, West Angeles Church of God in Christ. He was hospitable. He was the friendliest person in the whole church. Uh, and he would invite us uh, many times. He invited me to breakfast. Uh, one time I was uh, there and I had breakfast with Chris Tucker. Another time I was there, I had breakfast with Donnie McClurkin. And uh, through his hospitality, he taught the whole church to be hospitable. Everybody didn't get the lesson, okay? But the church was a hospitable church, a giving church. Uh, Dr. Thomas P. Grissom, Salem United Methodist Church, very hospitable man. When you would see him, he would say, Merry Christmas. And he would smile and he had a deep voice. He would say, come in. He, would, he was always glad to see you. And so one of the things I learned from the men of God is to be hospitable. I learned the same thing from the women of God. Uh, my mother, who loved the church, uh, Sister Susie Hyde, uh, Sister Ernestine Mitchell, Sister Emily Hollins. Uh, I learned to be hospitable. And when I was in seminary, I came to New York. I, was, I, uh, I had family in Brooklyn, but we weren't close. So I really felt like I was all alone. I found hospitality in the church. St. Luke AME Church in Harlem, St. John Baptist Church, and later on in Salem. I found hospitality. The people of God welcomed me. And I found out that in New York, the churches were big on having dinner after service. Everybody in Chicago didn't do that. We had dinner on special occasions, but St. Luke had dinner every Sunday. And I first went because uh, I was... Uh, I just wanted to be around some black people in church. And they were A and me, but they, they had a Pentecostal service. They would shout and get happy. But they were so hospitable. They would welcome me and they would insist that I eat. When they gave you a plate, it was gigantic. Um, they were so friendly. And this is something that you'll find in uh, most churches, I think, uh, a kind of hospitality, friendliness, a welcoming spirit. Now. We, you're not going to find this all the time. It doesn't always happen. But you will find that love of guests, love of strangers. You will find somebody who um, makes you uh, uh, feel at home. They're friendly. Uh, they're generous. Uh, give you a, a nice seat. I was at a church. I went to Chicago once, and this just came to my mind. And my mother and I wanted to go to Fellowship Baptist Church, formerly pastor by the great uh, Reverend Clay Evans, but uh, the singer Charles Jenkins was the pastor at the time. He's moved on, and we got there a little late, and it was so many people there. There was nowhere to sit, and so they said, "Well, you can stand." And I was like, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not standing up for a whole service. I'm not gonna have my." I think she was 87, 86 year old mother stand up. So I said, "Mom, I'm going to get the car. I'm leaving," and so I walked out. I walked to the bottom and I walked a little ways from the church. The usher ran out to church and ran down the street and said, sir, sir, come back, come back. She said, we got you a seat. We got your mother's seat. We got your mother's seat. I said, oh, you did? She said, oh, yes. She said, I heard you. We got your mother's seat. And I came back in and my mother waved. And so uh, I was good. And then they got me a seat. Uh, show you the kind of hospitality. This woman chased me down the street to bring me back into the church. And that's one of the things that makes that church great, that, that the pastors had that kind of spirit, the people had that kind of spirit. Um, and so um, when we're hospitable, we, through our friendliness and through our uh, generosity and through our attitude and practice, we help people to feel the love of God. All right, and you should always uh, be careful uh, to, to, to be, uh, I'm going to get to this, but the Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 2, you can entertain an angel and be unaware. Mm -hmm. People might not smell right. People might not look right. But you should always be hospitable in the house of God and in your home. Now, being hospitable does not mean being unwise. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to, I want to give this warning early on. Uh, the Bible says, Love your enemy, but it says love your neighbor as yourself. And a lot of times we think the Bible says love your enemy as yourself. The Bible does not say that. It says love your enemy, but it says love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, 
your neighbor is the person who has needs, uh, you can treat them, do what you would do for them. But you have to, first of all, identify an enemy. And you don't have to take an enemy in your home. You got somebody in your neighborhood that's a violent crack addict. You don't have to bring them in and say, oh, you can sleep here tonight. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Um, you have to make a distinction between being hospitable. Uh, I had a friend, he was a crack addict, and uh, we had struggled. And I had, uh, <laughs> I had, uh, he asked me to meet him in Kansas Fried Chicken up on J Street. And I met him and we talked. And we talked about God delivering him from crack. And we had been struggling with it for years. I've been with him. And uh, he asked, he was hungry. I brought him chicken for about an hour. And uh, at the end, he said, well, can I come to your house? I said, no, you can't come to my house. He said, why? Why can't I come to your house? I said, well, the last time you came to my house, I'm trying to find my, my I can't find it. I have a little, I have a little sword in my drawer. I can't find it. The last time I came, I said, the last time you came to my house, I slept with my knife under my pillow in case you had a violent fit and, and of crack and you wanted to come in and kill me. And I had a knife under my pillow. I was going to send you straight to heaven. And the Lord told me I didn't have to do that tonight. He said, where am I going to sleep? I said, you're going to sleep in the bed that you have made. Whether that bed be on the subway or in the park, wherever that bed is, that's where you're going to sleep. He said, man, are you serious? I said, I'm serious as a heart attack. You are not coming to my house and have me sleep with a, a knife on the pillow and a bat next to the bed. I'm not doing that anymore. Lord told me I didn't do that. So I was not hospitable to him in that way. However, I gave him money and uh, I told him, I'm going to the bed that I chose. And you're going to lay in the bed that you made. And so he left. And in, in a way it helped him because he was delivered from crack. Amen. And has been and, and met a wonderful woman of God and got married and had children and is still clean to this day. Hallelujah. And the Lord is still blessing him. So you got to be careful. I want to I wanna warn you in being hospitable because as we see when we watch the news, Deacon Flowers was just telling me one of his uh, family, one of his distant family members, one of his, was it an in-law? Yes. Uh, or in-law uh, was, was involved in the murder, one of the murders that you heard about uh, in the tavern. I want you to pray for that family. Uh, they are dealing with loss tonight in the hand of evil. An enemy has done this. So I want to warn you, to be, first I want to say be hospitable. And definitely every leader must be hospitable. But I want to warn you too about hospitality and tell you to be careful, be discerning. And I want to, I want to tell you another story. Uh, years ago, some of you remember Brenda Moore, the great musician. She came to my church and led a workshop. She is the one who made the arrangement. Oh, Lord, how excellent. Mm -hmm. How excellent, you know the song, how excellent he is. Well, that was Brenda Moore, who lived down the street from me. So Brenda, at one point in time, was going to Living Hope Baptist Church with me. And at one time, I had a ministry on the bus giving out tracts. Uh, the Lord told me to get on the bus, give out tracts. Now, some of you might not know what a track is. A track is a little piece of paper uh, about this big. It's usually more square and it has a gospel message and you give it to people and ask them to read it until you tell them the lord loves you and ask them please read this and they read it it's, it's it's designed for them to read it quickly and then come to christ so um i had a ministry where the lord told me to get on the bus and give out tracks and so uh one day brenda she said i want to do that she she rode the bus with me and she said, I want to give out tracks. I said, okay, well, this is what you do. When somebody sit down next to you, you turn to them and say, can I give you this? And you give it to them, and they're going to ask you, what is it? And you start to tell them about the Lord. And she said, okay, okay, I got it. We ran through it. We did a little rehearsal. And so um, she got, she was, I, I got, we got on the bus. And I told her, don't go in the back, because the back is where all the rough people sit. 
It's where all the three car Molly guys and all the hustlers and all the <laughs> all the uh, uh, dice dice games. You listen. You all live in New York. I think the buses in Chicago have always been rougher than the buses in New York. Now, back of the bus in Chicago, it was always going down. So I told them, I'm going to the back of the bus, sit up front. I said, I'm going to sit in the middle where I can watch you. And so a guy came. She was excited. A guy came and sat next to her. And nobody was sitting next to me. And then somebody came and sat next to me. And I gave him a track. And I talked to him a little bit. And they got off the bus. They said, thank you. And I noticed this guy talking to her. So I noticed she looked kind of scared. And so I was like, oh, this isn't going good. And so I, I, I prepared my mind for trouble. And I started praying. I was binding up the evil spirit. I was loosening the power of God. I didn't know what was going on. And then I saw she, she really was scared. So I, I thought the guy might be saying something crazy. And so I moved a little closer. And, and then the guy got up and he got off. And she more or less said, <laughs> So I sat down and I said, what happened? She said, oh, she put that little chest. She said, I'm so nervous. I said, well, what happened? She said, well, I gave the guy the track like you told me. And I asked him to read it. And she said, I told him, God loves you. And so he said, oh, how do you know God loves me? She said, well, the Bible says so. And so he said, well, do you love me? And so she said, well, yes, I, I, I love you. He said, well, if you love me, why don't you come get off in two stops and come to my house and, and show me your love? So she said, she said, she didn't know what to say. She said, well, we didn't talk about nothing like that. And we didn't. I realized, see, you got that wisdom. I realized I put it in predicament and I didn't train her well enough. Because wasn't no women telling me to come home and show them no love. <laughs> Thank God. But no women telling her. This guy told her that. And she didn't know what to say. And so then he got kind of system. Well, yeah, I got to get off in two stops. Why don't you come home? So she said she started to turn around and say, where are you? I said, well, I was watching. She said, yeah, I knew you were. So I tried to stay calm. I just tried to tell him about Jesus. And I said, listen, it's not about me going home and showing you anything. It's about the Lord loving you. And he said, well, I, I don't, he said, I need, I need, I need a human being to show me they love you. And so she's like, well, I'm not the human being to show you that. And so, uh, he got off. Now, I would have said to him, I would have went up and I would have begged him, brother, this is a Christian sister. She's telling you about Jesus. She can't go home with you. And then whatever happened would have had to happen. Um, I just believe God. I never. I was threatened many times by people on the bus, but I never was hit. I never was struck. I was cursed out very good. I got cursed out and people spit in my face, cursing me out, but... I trusted God to bring me through. Amen. So that just goes to show you now, don't be unwise in your hospitality, okay? And understand when you deal, especially if you deal with the public, understand, um, and sometimes it's better for women to minister to women. Sometimes it's better for men to minister to men. Now, not always. There's cases where men can minister to women, and it could be helpful, and women can minister to men, but you got a lot of, a lot of other stuff that gets in the way of people hearing the gospel. And so you have to be careful. You have to keep it about the Lord. You have to keep it about people feeling the love of God. And so I want to stress that. We we got out of that situation. Let me just say, Brenda said, I ain't giving out trash no more. This ain't for me. You by yourself, okay? And she never, we rode together on the bus. But she was like, you go ahead and give her whatever you want. I'm just going to sit here and be quiet. And I'm going to pray for you. She never gave out tracks again. I want to make this point. We must learn to be hospitable. Hospitality and being hospitable is not natural. It's spiritual. And I want everybody that's taking notes to write this down. We must learn to be hospitable. This is true because many people are not trained and taught in their family to be hospitable. When I began to do work in church... I realized all people in the community are not taught the same. There were some people who were not taught to say thank you. There were some people who were not taught to say please. And we were taught that. You couldn't just go in and say, give me some, give me some eggs. You had to say, can I please have some eggs? 
Mm -hmm. When you got the eggs, you better say thank you. Amen. Okay. We were taught that when grown folks are talking, you don't talk. You just don't talk. You wait till they finish, and then you. We learned in church to put up the the, the they call it the Baptist finger. Mm -hmm. This finger means excuse me. And when adults are talking, you learn to bring the Baptist finger home and say, excuse me, okay? But many, what I found out when I started working with uh, children is that many people are not taught the same things, okay? Uh, and so some people are not taught to be friendly. Some people are not taught to be accepting. Just like some people are not taught to clean up every day. Can we be honest? Come on now. Can we get real? Some people, um, one of the things about hospitality is you should be able to invite people in your home. Well, if your home is dirty and nasty, you ain't going to want to invite nobody. Okay, now the solution is clean up your home. One of the things about the saints is that uh, the saints have homes that could be visited. Now we're in COVID now. We know we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're on a different page at this point in our history. But before COVID, um, Hopefully, you were using your home to have Christian people in and entertain. One of the greatest things that happened in the history of this church was when I came, I asked people to host a youth fellowship in their homes. And we came to different homes. And the youth were looking at how people lived. And it was inspirational because a lot of the homes were beautiful and clean. There were homes in the developments that were beautiful and clean and looked like $1,000 apartments. And so they saw you don't have to go outside of the development. You can be right in the development, be clean, be stylish, and be fashionable. Then we went to other people's homes outside the development. They were clean and they were nice and they were beautiful. But it was a great, it was a great, um, it was a great joy for the people who hosted us, and it was a great learning for the youth that were there. We were trying to train them in the church to be hospitable. Okay. Um, and to be gracious and to know how to receive hospitality. Uh, uh, but a lot of people have not been trained in the family. So when you come in contact with somebody, maybe they were raised in a family, they didn't wake up and say good morning. Okay, they just walk up and say, get out of the bathroom. <laughs> Give me some juice. <laughs> Give me some eggs. All right, now, uh, if you were a person who's been trained, then you can help train them. I was in a program with the great Larry Hawkins. We would go out to lunch and dinner in places, and he would make us stack the plates. So one day I asked him, I said, why are we stacking the plates? He said, so whoever comes here after us can have an easier time. I realized later, we would go to these white places, what he was saying is that he wanted whoever black came after us to have an easy time. Mm -hmm. So we would we would just we would clean up after ourselves. And also he was teaching us to clean up after ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because he realized a lot of people came from families where that wasn't taught. And so we have to learn to be hospitable. Um, many people have not been trained and taught in the church to be hospitable. And then you have some people their proclivities make them inhospitable. We had a, a, a usher in this church, I won't call no names, but she was a wonderful person. But as an usher, she could be inhospitable. She could be very mean, and if you came in at the wrong time, she would break on you. Mm -hmm. She was good at talking about people. She was strongly built, and she looked intimidated. Mm. Well, <laughs> she went through a stretch where every Sunday she was getting in a fight with somebody. And I had to say to her, you have to learn how to speak with seasoned speech. Your speech is not seasoned. She would say, yes, Pastor. She was very obedient. We were very close. I didn't call no name. Mm -hmm. And I loved her. She loved me. But at times, she could be rough. So a man came in one day. He forgot to take off his hat. And she broke on him. Well, he took his hat off. She was still breaking on him. You ought to know not to come in. Mm -hmm. And so the man turned out was a preacher. And it was a funeral. And I could see this going on in the back. And he called me later on and said, your usher attacked me. And so I called in and I said, well, and I found out she had indeed attacked him. And one of the deacons had said something to her and she stepped to him in her anger. And I had to say to her sister, you, you, you're wrong. This is not hospitality. 
And I, I said, do you know you attacked Dick and so-and-so? She said, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I said, yes, you did. I said, you're so mad. You don't even know what you're doing. So I made her sit down because we don't need nobody on the door that's inhospitable. You're supposed to be hospitable. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to be turning people away and making people cry. Another couple came when she got with them so rough. They, they were crying. They said, we ain't never come back to this church. Somebody brought them to me, and we had to have all these meetings. So I said, no, sit down. I don't need you to be a usher. And I was trying to teach her, which I think she got, because she couldn't believe She said, you're going to sit me down? I said, I'm going to sit you down, because you're not doing your job. You're hurting the church. You're hurting the gospel. I'm, I'm preaching my lungs out. you back there breaking on people, breathing out fire on them. And so she had to stop being an usher. Now, she had plants all over the church. She just watered the plants. But you sat your behind down. But it helped her because she became more hospitable. Because she really was a nice person. She just had, let me see, some ways. Let's put it like that. All right? So we must learn how to be hospitable. And in the interest of learning to be hospitable, because it's not just the bishop. It's the president. It's the vice president. It's the treasurer. It's anybody that's full of the Holy Spirit. Because you never know when somebody comes in who they're going to sit next to. They might sit next to you. So, in, 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 in light of that, let me just give you a couple of tips about being hospitable. First of all, say hello. Now, a lot of people in church walk past people and don't say nothing. What is that about, as people say? Learn how to say hello to people. That's right. Learn how to speak to people. If you don't say hello to somebody you just saw, you're being rude. Are y'all listening to me? First of all, say hello to people. Second, learn how to smile. Some of us are so miserable, we bring our misery with us and we throw it on people. Don't throw your misery on other people. Smile. If you don't feel like it, smile. It's something about smiling, it'll make you feel better. All right, so first thing is always speak to people. Always speak courteously. Hello. How are you? Whether you feel like it or not, this is God's house. One of the things people have to remember, this is not your house. This is God's house. Whatever, whatever mess you got going on at home, you got to step it up or you can't certainly be one that stands at the door and you won't be in the will of God if you are making people uncomfortable in the church. Well, this goes for the home too. You should do the same things in your home. You should say hello. You wake up in the morning, say hello, good morning. When people leave, say goodbye. Don't just boom, people hear the door. Oh, they gone. <laughs> No, say, so-and-so, I'm leaving. Goodbye. God bless you. I'll see you later. Be mannerable. All right? That's part of hospitality. Part of hospitality is make room to sit. How many of us have been to, in churches where the usher asks you to move, people don't want to move. This is my seat. You make people step all over you. No, be hospitable. Move. I've been in churches where I was in the pulpit. I moved out the pulpit to give somebody a seat. Give people a seat. Let people sit down. Move if the ushers ask you to move. Make sure everybody's comfortable. That's what it means to be hospitable. Everybody good? Everybody all right? Even sinners do that sometimes. So you're a Christian. You ought to do it. Make others comfortable. If, if you know that it's two people don't like each other, don't sit them next to each other. <laughs> sit one on this side. Sit one on that side so they can work it out. Make people feel comfortable. If, if people are speaking, make sure everybody have a chance to speak. Don't let the talkative person take over the group. Mm -hmm. that's, in that's inhospitable. Be hospitable. Make sure everyone gets a chance to say something. If, if pe Listen, sometimes we have uh, these dentists. Well, we don't have them now because we're not meeting. But we used to have these dentists. And people were, there's food on every table. And so people come up to the table where I'm sitting. They say, can I have some chicken? Now, I could have said so-and-so. There's a big pile of chicken at your table. Go on over there to your table and eat chicken at your table. Don't be coming up here with these people sitting here and eating our chicken. <laughs> but I want everybody to be comfortable. So I said, go ahead. People come in. <laughs> then somebody come in and say, why? Why are they go eat chicken at their table? Yeah, I know. And you're right. But old people used to tell you, you used to give up, you have to give up the right for the wrong. Mm -hmm. 
What they meant was not that you should do wrong, but that sometimes you're in the right, but to help people and to keep from jumping on people and to keep from fighting people, you just let things go. All right, now, if you come up and then you, well, I don't eat chicken, but if it's some fish that somebody made for me and everybody, I done gave it all up, you come for the last piece of fish, then I'm going to tell you, no, you must go and sit down. I ain't going to let you eat my last piece of fish. All right? Unless the Lord tell me. And sometimes the Lord tells me, go ahead, get your fish. Mm -hmm. All right? But we want to be hospitable. We want to show the love of God in small ways and in small things. You might be in a hurry. Somebody might stop you. This happens to me all the time. People stop me and they want to tell me something. Sometimes I'm in a hurry. But the Lord said, listen to what they say. Oh, Lord, I'm already late. I'm going to be late. Yeah, well, you're already late, so listen. You never know what's going on with people. You never know what people are. Let people, let people, um, let people know that they're important to God and they're important to you. This is part of what it means to be uh, hospitable. Why should you be hospitable? The Lord Jesus was hospitable. The woman grabbed him in public. First of all, a woman supposed, was not supposed to touch a man in public, period. Second, a woman was having a cycle, and a woman on a cycle was deemed to be unclean. She should have been staying away from men. should have been at home. And, 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 and third, you know, she went behind him. It was a secret thing. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, who touched me? Right. And when he found out, the disciples said, everybody touched. He said, no, nah. so the power went out of him. <clears throat> Somebody touched me with a with a hunger. Somebody touched me with a drive. All right. Many times Jesus was interrupted where he was going. He was going to work one miracle, and he was interrupted to work another one. Jesus allowed. Jesus didn't say, "Leave me alone. I'm I'm going over here." No, <laughs> he allowed himself. All right. Jesus was going somewhere. And he seen the demons in the tomb, and the man and the demons in the man that was in the tomb. He was on his way somewhere else. But he was hospitable to that man. He uh, delivered him from 6,000 demons. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus takes time out to deal with people and be uh, troubled and bothered because he's hospitable. He wants us to be hospitable too. And I think in, in, in earlier times, people were more hospitable than they are now generally. But we need to go back to being hospitable. When Jesus was on the cross, there was two people next to him that he did not know. He was hospitable. One of them said, man, you, you're supposed to be back. If you something, get, up, get down and get us down too. We heard about you. Do something now. The other man said, shut up. <laughs> we guilty. He's innocent. And he turned to Jesus and said, when you come in your kingdom, remember me. Jesus was hospitable. He said, in the King James Version, I think, he said, surely, or truly, I tell you, today, not tomorrow, not at the trumpet, but today, you'll be with me in paradise. He was hospitable. What does he say? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He welcomed us before we called out to him. Mm-hmm. Romans 5 says, God showed his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before we start acting righteous or thinking about God, Jesus had already sacrificed himself. And in a sense, it was an act of hospitality. It was an act of welcome. It was an act of generosity. And that's how God wants us to be. God wants us to treat people right before they start acting right. God wants us to love people while they're still in their mess. God wants us to welcome people who on their own merit should not be welcome. Because he welcomed us. The Lord Jesus welcomed us. At the cross, he welcomed all of us. And he wants us to be welcoming, to carry on his light in a dark world. Now the Holy Ghost is hospitable. The Holy Ghost will come to us anytime we seek God and fill us. If a person is not saved, the Holy Spirit will speak to them so that they might be saved. The Holy Spirit will move in such a way 
that God, you know that this is of God. This is God moving. And so we have to be hospitable in the Holy Spirit because we don't know how God is going to lead us. Jesus said in John 3 that the spirit-filled person is like the wind. You don't know where the wind came from and you don't know where the wind is going. So it is, the Lord said, with everyone who's born of the spirit. You don't know where God is going to lead you. You don't know what God is going to tell you to do. But you are just ready to go where the Lord leads you. It's like the wind is ready to blow. I was reading the other day. And, ooh, who was it? Jeremiah, Isaiah, one of the prophets said, God has the wind in a storehouse. And then he reaches into the storehouse and brings out the wind. And I was watching a show about uh, tornadoes. There's a tornado, an F5 tornado can come with the wind 500 miles an hour. Now, when the wind is, is, is 90 miles an hour, it's shaking our house. 500 miles an hour, it picks up cars. It picks up houses. And then that wind dissipates. We don't know where it came from. We don't know where it's going, but we know it has power. So it is with the Holy Spirit. And we need to let God take us places where we can show some hospitality and some love to somebody who, who needs it. You never know. A fella came in here once and he was looking crazed and he wanted to talk to me. And uh, he told the men. And some of the men said, no, nah, I don't think you should talk to him. But I wanted to talk to him because I didn't want him to come back during the week when I wasn't here and the secretary was. So I went out and talked to him. He was looking, eyes was all glazed, looked like he had been in a fight. And I said, well, what, what do you want to tell him? And he told me some stuff. He didn't want to eat. He didn't want to hurt me. But just in case, all the men was there. Um, and I told him some stuff. And uh, I, I wanted to pray for him. He said, no, nah, I don't need no prayer. And he walked out. Short time later, he was murdered. Someone took a knife and slit his throat. You see, one of the things I learned is since you don't know what happened, you want to make sure the last time you talked to somebody, it was in the love of God. Since you don't know when you leave people, you don't know that you'll see them again, you want to make sure the last time you dealt with them, it was in the Spirit of God. And you want to make sure the last time you talked to them, you, <laughs> what was our definition of hospitality? that you uh, promoted healing, mm -hmm. that you tried to bring them to some inner rest, that you acted in a way that was favorable to life and growth, that you welcomed them, that you were friendly and giving to them, mm -hmm. that you, okay, 10 minutes, that you showed them the love of God because you don't know what's going to happen. You might be looking at God before them. But we want to we want to be hospitable. So the Holy Spirit is hospitable. And the Father is hospitable. God is a hospitable God. God is a welcoming God. All right. He sent Jesus so that we could get to him uh, in a blood-stained path. The Bible said through the blood we have access to one Father the shedding of his blood he wanted us to come close and so Christ came to die for our sins oh glory be to God hallelujah now uh, I want to I got 10 minutes left. I want to close by saying the true people of God are always hospitable mm -hmm. Hebrews 13 and 2 says uh, let me read it let me read it in the easy to read Bible I haven't read it so be interesting to see what it says, but this is a Bible study, is it not? Hebrews 13 and 2 says, Always remember to help people by welcoming them into your home. Okay, so this is showing, <laughs> this, this, this version is talking about hospitality, welcoming people into your home. Some people have done that and have helped angels without knowing it. Now the other Bible says, some people have entertained angels unaware. An angel might come to you in a human form 
and you might not know it. You want to make sure that you treated that angel good. After all, angels have power. That's right. Like demons have power to do evil. Angels have power to do good. That's why you don't get worried about the demons. You got angels watching over you. But if God tells an angel to come in human form up to you, which is biblical, it happens all the time. And I've had encounters, I've told you, I've had encounters in my life. One encounter, I know God sent the angel to warn me not to go to a certain college. I know God sent the angel. And I've had other things where I wonder, was that an angel? God sends angels. And you wonder, who wants to mess over an angel? Who wants to make an angel mad? Not me. I hope not you. Then the Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 9, let's look at that. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 9. It says, practice hospitality ungrudgingly to one another. Uh, the NIV version I was reading said, uh, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. So not only are we supposed to be hospitable to strangers, we ought to be hospitable to one another. We're brothers and sisters. We ought to promote healing and growth to each other. We ought to have a welcoming attitude to each other. We ought to be like my old pastor, Dr. Grissom. Every time you see somebody, you should say Merry, well, you don't have to say Merry Christmas, but every time I saw him, he would say Merry Christmas. And you know that feeling you have around Christmas time full of love and goosebumps he was saying let's be like that all the time and he was a great man of hospitality first time i met him he was hospitable he's going on now to be with the lord um but i learned so much from him one of the things i learned about being gracious and hospitable and so i want to challenge you all as i as i'm closing that the true people of god are hospitable now we know everybody in church and so, listen, don't don't go crazy because when people are mean to you, people have off days. Some days people just going through, they just act crazy. Like that usher's just acting crazy. But she been acting, she had too many off days. We had to stop that. Okay. But be willing to forgive people because you know you ain't always Christ-like. <laughs> so when other people are not Christ-like say, oh, today is not that day. But the true people of God are always hospitable. Yes. And a leader, a man or a woman of God, should always be welcoming and hospitable. Hallelujah. I've told you about the great leaders that I've had. And I, I thank God. I think most of our leaders are welcoming and hospitable. But it's not about liking people. It's about realizing everybody that you see is a child of God is a creature of God and they can become is a creation of God they can become a child of God through Jesus Christ oh glory be to God glory be to God yes. so and listen if other people are not hospitable never mind them you be hospitable because God has been hospitable to you all right we want to uh, uh, encourage you to give a, uh, a love offering go to TCO TLD.org and give a love offering uh, and then go to TCO, T-O-D-G-I-V-I-N, to give a love offering on Cash App. We got, uh, whoa, we got uh, monitors and cameras and speakers. And we're always trying to figure out a way to get better. Uh, so we want you to help us by giving Wednesday night offering. All right. Uh, you got a lot to be thankful for if you concentrate on God. If you receive from God. And so now, before we go, just want to call out some uh, people that are here. Uh, Reverend McDonald is here. Lorraine Brandt. Priscilla Douglas is here. Deacon Brickhouse is watching. Pamela Ingram is watching. Reverend and Brother Thompson out in Queens. Mm -hmm. Deacon Darlene Page. Dakota Barnes. Tijuana Wiggins. Cynthia Bright. Marilyn Tucker, Yvonne Prince, Charlotte Watson, Sister Young, Sister Kearney, Rosemary Perkins, Brother Douglas, Deacon Macbeth, Deborah Macbeth, Sharon Kennedy, 
uh, Courtney Lyons, Iris Gray, Brother Charles Kern, Kalisha Bernash. Continue to pray for you, Kalisha, Diane Caldwell, Deirdre White, Vanessa Johnson, Sister Moore, Candace Davis, Deacon Lyons, our chairman of the board. God bless you, Deacon. Patricia Armand, uh, Edward Patrick, my college brother, Trina Cook, Teresa McClurkin, Aaron Wiggins, Juanito Garrow, Vincent Washington. Amen. When is this uh, my Reese brother? Reese Washington's son. Reese Washington's son. God bless you, Vincent. Crystal Jackson, Dawn Allen. God bless you, Dawn. Uh, Christine Caraway, the one and only Christine Caraway, Annette Lyons. And Sister Carol Goodman. Let's give God a hand for everybody watching. <laughs> Listen, I don't take it for granted that you're watching. Uh, uh, we would have the Bible study if no one came. But boy, I'm glad people are here. Amen. It's encouraging to me to see that people are here. Now, our time, this COVID time is a time of fear. It's a time of violence. It's a time of increased demonic activity. But let's... Not let that influence how we act as Christians. Let's continue to show hospitality. Let's continue to show love. Let's continue to shine the light in the darkness because we have something that non-believers don't. We have a great and mighty God who has given us everything through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we thank you for tuning in today. I want you to be blessed. What we're going to do, because uh, it's not always easy to be hospitable, you got some people that test your hospitality. You got some family members. When you see them, your blood pressure goes up because you know, oh, here it comes. She's here. Here it comes. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's only a matter of time. Uh-oh, what's that? It's part of the bottle. Oh, what's going on now? So we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to let people come back and ask questions uh, because this is a, a, a great point about... Uh, True Christians, leaders especially, but all Christians being hospitable. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, I love you. And sometimes you have to, sometimes it's good to say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes. Amen. If people want to take you on a date because you said, I love you, say, go away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you with the love of Jesus, the love of the Lord. Amen. Sunday at 3 o'clock. Sunday at 2.30. Uh, I'm, I will be lecturing about critical theory, uh, black churches, and black Christian thought for black history. I want to thank everybody that tuned in Sunday. I've gotten great feedback. I want to thank you all for watching me so much. Um, every year we have a black history program. And uh, because of COVID, because I was away, uh, we don't have one. We're going to have a women's history program next month for my Board of Christian Education. Dr. Macbeth, but this year uh, I'm lecturing on subjects in black church history, and you hear a lot against uh, critical race theory, and I'm going to talk about uh, the origins and development of critical race theory, whether or not Christians should be engaged in that, and uh, um, what types of thinking uh, Christians have done, and where we as the people of God wind up in so many historical uh, issues and questions. Amen. So I want you to join us. 2.30. And then I'm going to be finished at 2.30. I'm going to change clothes. And then we're going to run over to Monk Memorial. You know where Monk Memorial is? Down on Fulton Street? Yes, Fulton. By, uh, right across from the Brevoort. Right across from Brevoort. Uh, a housing development yes. uh, uh, is uh, uh, Monk Memorial. It's Men's Day. And we're going to preach a word to them. But Sunday, uh, I'll be in the pulpit, and I'll be preaching the word of God. Amen. I uh, want you to come. I was a little rusty last Sunday, but I'm knocking the rust off. Amen. Uh, hell is mad. They didn't like that sermon. Amen. They've been fighting me all week. But the devil is a lie. God is getting the victory. So come Sunday, and let's get blessed together. God bless you. Remember, the door is open. Let's bow our head. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful Bible study. And Lord, I thank you for your hospitality. I thank you for welcoming all of us. And Lord, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for welcoming me. I thank you for all the places I've gone as a stranger and I was welcome. I thank you, Lord, how you turn cold hearts into warm hearts. 
you turn unwelcome spirit to a welcoming spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for letting us know wherever we go where we're not welcome, we've got a seat in heaven, and we're going to be welcome there. God, we thank you and we praise you. Bless your people as we leave today and bring us together, Lord, in 10 minutes to uh, have an overflow experience in your word and in fellowship. Bring us back together on Sunday. Bring us back during the week in our ministries. This is our whole prayer. In my name is the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. God's people said, amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Amen. And we'll see you in 10 minutes.